451 now. Thanksgiving, of course, is just around the corner. In fact, it's right there. Yeah, and it's hard to think that millions of people in this country struggle on a regular basis to feed themselves and their families. But as Newsy's Lauren Magarino reports in today's positive story, sometimes it's just a matter of getting the food to the people who need it. Food cooked with love just tastes better. We're making some turkey meatloafs and some mashed potatoes and some greens from the farm. Today's really comforting food. <laughs> it's an experience Chef Fresh Robertson wants to share with her community. You know, like how you feel when your grandma, or your auntie, or your mom, or someone cooks food for you. Robertson is cooking 60 meals for love fridges embedded in neighborhoods across Chicago. So you're probably wondering, what does a love fridge even look like? Well, I'll show you right now. This is one love fridge in the neighborhood of Englewood, and you can see that it's completely painted. This was done by a local artist, and all of the love fridges will have some sort of artwork on it. It's very community-based, and the premise is very simple. Take what you need and give what you can. That's it. Aimed at tackling food insecurity, community members donate most of the food in these fridges. But Chef Robertson's meals are part of a monthly initiative called Full Circle, where the Love Fridge pays local chefs and restaurants to cook nutritious meals for the fridges. When the pandemic hit, all of my regular gigs got canceled. All the things I normally cook for got canceled. It's really nice to like be able to cook for community and have that be kind of a paid opportunity, so. Volunteers help distribute those meals. People need help. People need help and I figure I'm like, I'm able-bodied. I'm capable, I have a vehicle. The question isn't why should I, is why shouldn't I? More than 13 million U.S. households, around 35 million Americans, experienced food insecurity sometime in 2020, according to the USDA. People were waiting, like especially in the middle of the pandemic, people were waiting at the fridges to grab their milk, you know, their cheese, their eggs. Like those fridges get cleaned out immediately. Community fridges got their start in Germany in 2012 and grew globally. Their popularity exploded over the pandemic, with more than 200 spanning the U.S. from Seattle to Nashville. It makes me feel really good, and like I know it's like a nice thing to do. To Albany, New York. Every day people come. That's why I stay empty all the time, because people are always coming through here, picking up, you know, getting food. They've revealed there's plenty of food to go around, but it's a problem of distribution and the food just not being properly distributed, you know, and anchored in the communities that need access to food. These communities are typically home to black and Hispanic families who have seen chain stores close. Back when Dominic's made a kind of mad dash out of, out of Chicago, out of Illinois, um, we had a grocery store and so we hadn't had it filled for maybe seven or eight years in our neighborhood. And so it finally came back like right before the pandemic hit. Leaving community members with the task of filling the gaps for an essential need.